Hello folks, today I'm going to show you how to process the Hubble palette in PixInsight. But before I get started, I just wanted to show you briefly my Whirlpool Galaxy. I'm still working on it. And this is the data, the one on the left that I showed in the, the video from the prior day. But um, after recovering more data, this is about two and a half hours of data on the left. And the one on the right is about four hours of data. I'm, I'm kind of liking the one on the, the right better so far, and it's, it's less purple than the one on the left. I may have overdone it with the purple on that one. This one's more natural looking on the right, so I'm going to keep working on that and, and see how it goes. Okay, let's get to the Hubble palette now. So let's close this, and let me open up my data for the Hubble palette. And the example I'm going to use is for the Pac-Man Nebula. This is data I captured uh, many months ago. And this is what I originally came up with. This wasn't doing the Hubble palette. It was just a red Pac-Man over here on the right. But if you want to know how something looks for the Hubble palette, I like to go to Astrobin. And I did a search on Pac-Man Hubble. And you can get the, the general idea here of, of how it, it maybe it should look. And let me click on the first one here. Uh, and, and you can see in this example, we've got gold on the edges and cyan in the middle here. So I think that's what we're going to be aiming for. And uh, I think this one is about 10 hours of data. So uh, let, let's just go back to the uh, to my data here. And... Uh, what you're going to need is um, uh, data from three narrowband filters, HA, oxygen, and sulfur. And let's close this. We don't need it anymore. So this data has already been stacked and aligned. And if you're not sure how I got this far, I have another video on that. I'll, I'll post a link for it. Uh, in the upper right here, you should see something flashing up. And the first thing we want to do is do our LRGB combine. Let's get right to it. LRGB combine. And we don't need L. Now we're going to put our sulfur data in red. Our HA data in green. And our oxygen in blue. And let's execute it see what it looks like okay we don't need that anymore let's do a screen transfer function and see how it looks and and don't forget to turn the link button off or you get weird looking results let's stretch it and that's what I would have expected it came up green okay let's take another look at this picture on Astrobin. Okay, this is what we're going for, remember. Gold on the outside and cyan in the middle. So the next thing we want to do is make this picture nonlinear. I'm not going to worry about color calibration or background extraction. I'm just going to show you really quick how to get how to turn green from gold from from green to gold and, and cyan. So let's make the picture nonlinear. We'll pull up the histogram. Execute that. Turn off the stretch. Okay, we don't need these anymore. And let's just shrink our original data. We don't really need to worry about these right now or ever again, actually. Okay, now. Um, Anyone who has seen my other videos knows I like easy solutions. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, if you want a complicated solution and, and, and a perfect, something that will make your data look perfect, this is probably not how to do it. So, but let me just show you what I do. We want to go into noise reduction and pull up SCNR. Uh, see, the, the gold and the cyan is in this picture. We just have to peel away the green to see it. So let's execute this. I'll just leave all the default settings as is. 
And, and, oh, and one more thing, you have to run this after the histogram. If you run it before, it's not going to have enough effect or impact for you. So let's execute this. And there it is. It's like magic. Uh, you can see the gold on the outside, the cyan in the middle. We just have to use some curves to bring it out a little more. And by the way, if you see some continuity issues with the video, it's because I keep getting distracted here at home. So I keep starting and stopping the video. So anyway, let's go into curves and see what we can do with this. Let's open up a preview, click on RGB. We'll darken the background anyway, even though we really didn't do much work on the background beforehand. Make the nebula a little bit brighter. Let's close that. Okay, now let's uh, let's make a mask of the nebula so we don't totally screw other stuff up. Let's go to mask. There's a lot of different ways you can make a mask. I've already got it set up here. Let's close that. Oops. I think I closed up that accent here. All right, let's uh, pull that up. Execute it. Let's drag this over here. Let's see what's protected. Let's go into show mask. Okay, the, the, the nebula is protected. Let's invert it. Okay. Now let's see if we can bring out that gold and cyan more. And the way I do it is to just turn up the saturation. See? Here comes that sign. This is the preview, by the way. Let's click on it. Execute it. And let's see how our main picture looks. Oh, it's okay. Let's, let's go one more notch. Execute it one more time. Okay, let's close that. And that's our Hubble palette. Let's take a look at what we were shooting for here with this other picture. And they've got the gold and the cyan in the middle. And I have got the gold and the cyan in the middle. And one thing is, I looked at this picture before. This is about 10 hours worth of data. And my picture is less than 3 hours worth of data. So it's not really going to compare that well. And keep in mind, we totally ignored working on the background, no color calibration. We didn't even do an automatic background extraction or dynamic background extraction. But that's how you go from getting that all green image to getting uh, the gold and the cyan. And I've tried it on other nebula, other old data I've used, and the same approach seems to work. So it's not a one-hit wonder, and there's probably many other uh, better ways to do this, but this was just a quick approach to getting something close to the Hubble. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you later.